This is a brief tutorial on reaction orders as it applies to kinetics. So we want to write a rate law for some general reaction with two reactants. We'd say the rate of the reaction is equal to some constant, which we'll call the rate constant, times the concentration of the first reactant raised to a power, which is its reaction order, multiplied by a second reactant raised to its order, where M and N are not necessarily the same thing. So we'd say the reaction is nth order with respect to reactant 1 and nth order with respect to reactant 2. The overall order would be the sum of the exponents, in this case, M plus N. A reaction could be zero at the order if M or N was zero, which means the reaction is independent of that particular concentration. Note that the values of the exponents or orders have to be determined experimentally, and that they're not just related to the stoichiometry. Reaction could be zero at the order if the reactant Concentration does not affect the rate of the reaction. It's first order if I double the concentration and it causes the rate to double. Or if I triple the concentration, the rate would triple, so on and so forth. The reaction would be second order if doubling the rate caused a 2 squared or a factor of 4 increase to the rate. That is, the rate would quadruple. If it were times 3, it would be 9, etc. And so, nth order, if doubling the concentration causes a 2 raised to the n power increase in the rate. So, it's going to be whatever factor you increase the concentration raised to the n power increase in the rate, and that where the n is your reaction order. And note that the rate constant is independent of the concentration. So let's look at a generic reaction where A plus B reacts to form some product C. Below you have a table there where it shows you three trials and then concentrations of A and concentrations of B and a rate in moles per liter per second by the concentrations or molarity. And so we want to determine what the order of the reaction is with respect to each reactant, the rate law for that reaction, and the value of the rate constant. So if we look between reaction 1 and reaction 2, we see that in the A column, the concentration stays the same, but in the B column, the concentration doubles and we get a factor of 4 in the rate. So the rate doubles, and we get a factor of 4 increase in the rate. So keep that in mind. Now, if we look at reaction 1 and compare it to reaction 3, we find that the A is doubled, but then the B stays the same, and we find that the rate, in fact, doubles. From that information, we can figure out what the reaction orders are, and hence the rate law. So between reaction 1 and 2, the concentration of B doubles, A stays the same, the rate quadruples, so the reaction is second order with respect to the concentration of B. Between, in reactions 1 and 3, A doubles and the rate doubles, B stays the same, so the reaction is first order with respect to the concentration of A. The rate law is, is equal to K, which is your rate constant, times A, raised to the first power, as indicated by the lack of an exponent, right? So the first order with respect to A, like we said before, and then the concentration of B raised to the second power, because B was second order. So that's our rate law. Rate is equal to the rate constant times the concentration of A times the concentration of B squared. 
Alternatively, we could do a little bit more mathematical solution as to using a more conceptual approach, and this will work better if the numbers aren't as friendly as they are in the example that we were just using. For example, the reactant A order was based on the rate, comparing the rate for reaction 3 to the rate for reaction 1 and the concentration of A in reaction 3 to the concentration of A in reaction 1. So if we say rate 3 divided by rate 1 is equal to concentration of A3 divided by concentration of A1 raised to the n power, where n is the order of the reaction and solve for n. Doing that, we plug in the numbers from reaction 3 and reaction 1, 4.90 times 10 to the negative third and 2.45 times 10 to the negative third moles per liter per second for the rates and 0.2 molar and 0.1 molar for the concentrations. We find that 2 equals 2 raised to the n power where we can conceptually see that n is 1. Just like we did in the previous slides. But if we needed that algebraically, if the numbers were not nearly so friendly, we could take the log of both sides. So that brings the n from the exponent down to here using the laws of logarithms. So it'd be n times log 2 is equal to log of 2 raised to n power. is equal to log of 2, and then algebraically solving we find that log 2 over log 2 is, of course, 1. So we find, again, the order is 1 just by a little bit more mathematical method. So now we can solve for the rate constant. Since this is all lecturized data with no error in it, we can just treat it as one reaction would get, give the same rate constant as the same to others. Practically speaking, at if you have experimental data, you would calculate it for all three trials and average it. We'll dispense with that for this particular problem, though. So the reaction's overall third order, if you add the exponent, the implied 1 for the A and the 2 for the B, that's overall third order. Solving for K, K is equal to the rate divided by the concentration of A times the concentration of B squared. Using the data from trial one just arbitrarily, we plug in 2.45 times 10 to the negative third moles per liter per second for the rate and 0.1 liters, one moles per liter for the concentrations of A and B. The concentration of B is squared. We get 2.5 liters squared per mole squared per second. Notice that the exponents on the liters and the moles, that's inverted molarity, and it's one less than the overall order. So that's a good way to remember the units on your rate constant. And then the other unit is, of course, inverse time. And the, that time will match the time on the rate. It could be seconds, minutes, hours, whatever. In this case, it's seconds. And that's the end of our short tutorial on reaction orders and kinetics.